viewers, welcome again. This is Mr. Dingo here, coming once more with chemistry lesson. Uh, in our previous class, we were able to uh, study about matter. We were able to define what matter is. In the second lesson, under the chapter matter, we are able to discuss about um, changes in energy, movement, arrangement, and also interparticle spaces between uh, particles and matter across the three states of matter. Today, uh, I'm here, I want to discuss what we call kinetic theory of matter, or what is commonly known as uh, the particle theory uh, of matter. So, we want to look at kinetic theory of matter and understand uh, kinetic theory of matter. And you want to study kinetic theory of matter in relation to the interconversions between the three states of matter. Um, as I said earlier, uh, kinetic theory of matter is also known as the particle theory. Many learners have asked me many times, what do we mean by particle theory? Particle theory and kinetic theory of matter are the same. Uh, today we want to go further to be able to understand how is kinetic theory of matter related to uh, this chapter. And I want to move forward to be able to illustrate uh, what kinetic energy is. When we are studying kinetic theory of matter, it's very important that we look at what kinetic energy is. So we have kinetic energy. So if you ask ourselves, what is kinetic energy? And as a chemistry teacher, I will be able to briefly explain what kinetic energy is without going into the details of physics. Now, kinetic energy means energy in motion. Energy in motion. Energy in motion, it means uh, energy that makes particles move. When a, a vehicle is moving, a motorcycle is moving, uh, an antelope is uh, moving, that one, we say they possess kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is very important if you are going to understand uh, what we call kinetic theory of matter or particle theory. Now, without wasting time, we really have to understand how is energy related to matter. Uh, and, and I want to be able to state what kinetic theory of matter uh, says. And without wasting time, I'll say that kinetic theory of matter uh, states that, kinetic theory of matter states that, that matter, matter is made up of, matter is made up of extremely, extremely tiny particles extremely tiny particles that are in constant constant random motion. So this is what kinetic theory of matter states, that matter is made up of extremely tiny particles that are in constant random motion. What does this mean? We can break this statement into parts. And I want to underline the first part which says extremely tiny particles. So matter is made up of extremely tiny particles. Then I will underline the last part which says that are in constant random motion. So I want to be able to give the five, five points that kinetic theory of matter try to look at in relation to particles of matter. And one of the things that we are, we are seeing from this statement of kinetic theory of matter is that it's made up of tiny particles, very, very tiny particles. Let me use the word extremely. Extremely tiny particles. So extremely particles means that matter is made up of very small particles. Very small particles that we cannot even see with our naked eye. If you just look at, we can see a solid, but we cannot see the small particle that make uh, that solid. So that's one of the things that kinetic theory of matter tells us. Number two, uh, according to the statement put forward by kinetic theory of matter, we can see that matter uh, is made up of particles that are in constant random motion. There are two things I want to take from here, constant and random. Constant motion, constant, what does that mean? Constant meaning it is not stopping. 
that the particles are continuously moving every time, every second. Number three is random. Particles, particles move randomly. Particles move, particles move randomly. So what does that, that mean? Random motion meaning that these particles are not moving at a, in a particular order. They are moving, uh, some are moving towards different direction, others are moving different direction. This is why we say they are, it's, it's a mess. Everything is moving in a way that you cannot tell at one particular point. You cannot predict where one point is going to be uh, at one part, a particular point. Number four, that is not actually captured in the statement of kinetic theory of matter. We are going to look at that these particles of matter have some forces between them. There's some forces of attraction that hold these um, uh, particles of matter. So particles of matter here, as we are saying, uh, particles of matter have, have forces, forces of attraction, forces of attraction, forces of attraction between them, between them. So these particles are not very free. They are not 100% free. But you can say that some forces of attraction are weaker than others. For example, if you look at the particles in air, the particles tend to move much more freely. When you look at the solid particles, the force of attraction holding the particles is much stronger. So the particles are pulled so close to each other that they have to move by vibrating. So that's one thing that we have to really uh, look at very seriously. Number five, and the last key point I want to talk about is that um, these particles, they possess kinetic energy. So we say that uh, particles of matter possess, the particles possess, possess kinetic, kinetic energy. What does this mean? We have, we have said that kinetic energy is the energy in motion. It's what make energy that makes particles move from one point to another or vibrate. Now, if particles of matter possess kinetic energy, it means these particles are moving. And we have agreed earlier in our earlier lessons that solid particles move by vibrating. Liquid and gas particles move from one point to another. Now, in this case, we are agreeing that these particles, because they are moving, solid are vibrating, liquids and gases are moving from one point to another, they have to possess kinetic energy because that's the energy that makes things move. Now, it therefore means uh, that the more kinetic energy something has, the faster it will move. So we are, can agree that because gas particles move faster, they have more kinetic energy than the solid particles that just vibrate. So learners, today we have discussed what we mean by kinetic energy theory of matter or what we call particle theory. And we have agreed that it states that matter is made up of very tiny particles that are in constant random motion. Next, we have talked about today, we have said that um, uh, if you look at the five things that we can discuss from matter, we have agreed that matter is made up of very tiny particles that we cannot see. That's number one. Number two, we have said that particles of matter are constantly moving. They don't stop moving. Whether at night or during the day, they don't stop moving. Number three, we have agreed that the movement that these particles of matter exhibit is, is random. It's not to a particular order. Number four, we have agreed that the particles of matter are having some forces of attraction that hold them together. And that is why we say that these forces, they vary from one substance to another. Others have strong bonds, others have very weak bonds. For example, gas particles move more freely because the forces of attraction holding the particles together is weak. But the solid particles are pulled so close to each other because the forces of attraction holding those particles are strong. And finally, viewer, we have talked about at the point that these particles of matter, they possess kinetic energy. And I've said that solid particles have less kinetic energy compared to the gas particles. And that is why gas particles move faster than the solid particles. Thank you viewers, and that's the end of